Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss chapter 5 doing sociology research methods from your textbook introducing sociology. As you know we have divided this chapter into 8 parts. So far we have discussed about research, subjectivity and objectivity in research, deciding about the topic of research, various research designs and considerations in the process of research, quantitative and qualitative data, primary and secondary data and mixed methods. We have also discussed about the advantages and disadvantages of various types of research methods, sampling, triangulation and the process of research. Now today in this lecture we will discuss about field work in sociology in detail and about the work of famous sociologists in India. Now what is field work? Field work as an important method of research has played major role in establishing anthropology as a social science. You will think that why we are discussing anthropology here but we will establish its relevance over the course of discussion. Anthropology studies primitive cultures. The works of James Fraser and Emile Durkheim are some of the significant contributions in the field of anthropology. But these works, the initial works were based on entirely second hand accounts. Beginning with 20th century, some anthropologists, many of whom were also natural scientists, started carrying out systematic surveys and first hand observation of these cultures. They carried out first hand observation of tribal cultures, their rituals, customs and languages. Gradually relying on second hand accounts was being considered as unacademic and unscholarly. Their works in the field work as one of the most important methods in the field of anthropology. An anthropologist will normally try to understand the whole nature, structure and functioning of the community that he wishes to study. One of the important techniques anthropologists use, especially in the beginning stages of their field work is to construct a genealogy of the community. What is genealogy? Genealogy method is the study of the lines of descent of an individual group or family from one generation to another. Genealogy helps the anthropologist to get acquainted with the structure of the community and become familiar with the way community lives, the kind of changes that have come about over a period of time. Researchers observe the community and take detailed notes of significant aspects of primitive cultures. Like anthropologists are generally interested in topics such as family and kinship relations, festivals, rituals, customs, modes of thinking and behavior patterns etc. They attempt to understand uniqueness of cultures, rational behind specific practices and explore about traditions. Sociologists too rely on field work as an important method of data collection. The difference between the work of sociologist and an anthropologist is not in terms of the content that is what they do because both of them do very much the same thing but the difference lies in where they do. While anthropologists typically study primitive cultures and remote tribal communities, sociologists study almost all sorts of communities from primitive tribal cultures to modern urban and industrial societies and organizations. But field work in sociology does not necessarily involve living in with the community all the time. Although sociologists spend most of the time with the group they study. For example, Michael Burovo, an American sociologist worked for many months as a mechanist in a factory in Chicago and wrote about the experience of work from the perspective of the workers. Street Corner Society, the study done by William Foote White is another classic example of field work in sociology. In India, fieldwork has been used extensively in village studies. The village was like a tribal community studied by the anthropologist. Village was a close-knit, integrated, bounded community and was small enough to be studied by a single person. That is, the sociologist could get to know almost everyone in the village and observe life there. Village had a unique social fabric where different units were interdependent, but interestingly, Anthropology was not popular with nationalist scholars because of its excessive concern with the primitive. Many educated Indians believed that such disciplines carried a colonial bias as colonies were perceived as primitive. They considered tradition as irrational and emphasized on the non-modern aspects of colonized society rather than identifying their progressive or positive aspects. 
questions were also raised about the link between early anthropology and colonialism. However, more than the methodological reasons, village studies were important because they provided Indian sociology with a subject that was of great interest in newly independent India. The government immediately after independence was interested in developing rural society or rural India as vast majority of our population was living in rural areas. During the entire struggle for freedom, Mahatma Gandhi has been ac actively involved in the programs for the development of villages. People from urban areas too were interested in villages because even after migrating to cities, they retained their ties with the families in the villages. Above all, villages were the places where most of the Indians belonged and lived. Exploring them became an important part of Indian sociology and field work became an important method most suitable for studying village society. Now let us discuss works of some of the prominent sociologists from India. Let us begin with Professor G. S. Gurye, Govind Sadasiv Gurye of Mumbai University. He is also known as founding father of sociology in India. Professor Gurye made an intellectual presence felt as an incisive social thinker, highly innovative and equally at ease with Vedic India and contemporary India. He had established his prominence with his study of the Todas of Nilgiri in 1906, which at that point of time was considered as the model of intensive investigation. As a sociologist, Professor Gurye was also supremely conscious of his role as a teacher, a guru, in the best of Indian tradition. Ever conscious of his pupil coverage, he attracted brilliant students from different corners of India. As a prolific writer, Professor Gurye wrote 32 books and scores of paper, which cover wide-ranging themes such as kinship and marriage, urbanization, ascetic traditions, tribal life, demography, architecture and literature. Professor Gurye played a key role in the professionalization of sociology by founding Indian Sociological Society and its famous journal Sociological Bulletin. His greatest work was Caste and Race in India, published in England as part of the History of Civilization series edited by C. K. Ogden in 1932. Professor Gurye was closely linked with the study of caste, which was well-known analysis of the problems of the scheduled tribes also. Inspired by the work of his students, Professor Gurye wrote on the grand theme of integration of tribals in India in 1943. He had concluded that the major problems of the tribals were never different from the problems of the poor rural people in general. In Culture and Society, the title of the work published in 1947, Professor Gurye discussed the difference between civilization and culture. Now, Professor M. N. Srinivas is yet another famous name in the field of Indian sociology. Professor Srinivas was in Department of Sociology at the Delhi School of Economics, Delhi University and was one of the pioneering sociologists in India. He sought to expand and reinforce ethnography and field-based social research as key methods for understanding contemporary India. Professor Srinivas not only legitimized the study of one's own society, but also strongly advocated the field-based research in Indian sociology. He coined several terms, the key terms that have not only gained currency in Indian sociology, but they have also become part of common lexicon such as dominant caste in 18, 1987, Sanskritization and vote bank in 1989. His work on religion, caste, village societies, politics and social change led him to develop new perspectives on India, including the persistence of caste both as a social system and as a central process, political process in the newly independent nations. He emphasized on field-based methods and stated that debates on the interlinkages between political economy and culture in India, shift in agrarian cultures and more recently on globalization, the growth of new middle class and the impact of new economy. He published many books like Marriage and Family in Mysore in 1942, Social Change in Modern India in 1972 and The Remembered Villages in 1991. Trilokinath Madan or T. N. Madan is currently Professor Emeritus of Sociology at the Institute of Economic Growth, Delhi University. And he is a distinguished senior fellow at Center for the Study of Developing Societies, Delhi. Professor Trilokinath Madan was elected a fellow of the Royal Anthropological Institute of Great Britain and Ireland in 1989. 
Professor Madan's most noted work is Family and Kinship Among the Pandits of Rural Kashmir, which presented an account of the social life of Kashmiri Pandits in 1989. Professor Madan occupied the Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan Chair in Humanities and Social Sciences at the University of Hyderabad in 1995. His more recent publications include Modern Myths, Locked Minds, Secularism and Fundamentalism in India. Yet another work is Images of the World, Essays on Religion, Secularism and Culture, which was published in 2005. Another work called as Sociological Traditions, Methods and Perspectives in Sociology of India and the Indian Sociological Society gave him Lifetime Achievement Award in 2008. Professor Yogendra Singh. Professor Yogendra Singh is a noted Indian sociologist. He is Professor Emeritus at Jawaharlal Nehru University and is one of the founders of the Center for the Study of Social Systems at JNU, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. He has been a professor at JNU since 1971. Professor Singh went on a Fulbright Fellowship to Stanford University, USA in 1967 and 68. He was also head of the Department of Sociology at Jodhpur University. Professor Singh's Modernization of Indian Tradition, published in 1973, has been one of the seminal works of analyzing the nature of social change in Indian society. He has written extensively on culture, caste and social change in India. Some of his important contributions are social stratification and social change, social change in India, crisis and resilience, essays on modernization and sociology of culture. He is planning to do a resurvey of villages which he had studied in 1955 during the work titled as Changing Patterns of Social Relations and Social Dynamics. Professor Singh intends to collect data after several decades in order to gauge the change in continuity among the villages by comparing it with the old research material and data that he has. Professor Singh is a sound scholar and an academic of international repute. Finally, let us talk about Professor Andre Bete. Professor Bete is Professor Emeritus of Sociology at Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi and one of the leading social theorists in India today. He is renowned for his studies on inequality and social change. He has published essays in comparative sociology in 1987 and essays in social and political theory in 2003. In 2005, Professor Bete received the Padma Bhushan as the mark of recognition for his work in the contribution in the field of sociology. The same year, that is in 2005, Professor Bete was appointed a member of the Prime Minister's National Knowledge Commission. The other noted sociologists in India are D. N. Majumdar, Iravati Karve and Lalita Prashad Vidyati, L.P. Vidyati. Some of the noted sociologists from West include Emile Durkheim, Max Weber, Talcott Parsons, Robert King Merton, Brownislaw Melinowski, James Fraser, Anthony Giddens, William White. You will learn more about these sociologists later in the studies of sociology. To conclude, let us summarize this chapter, what we have discussed in eight different parts. In this chapter, we have discussed what is research? What do we mean by research? What are the issues of objectivity and subjectivity in sociological research? We have discussed how to decide about topic of research, that is the area of interest that you want to conduct research on. We have discussed the difference between macro and micro sociology. We discussed about various types of research designs, various types of research methods, primary, secondary, quantitative, qualitative and mixed methods. We have discussed about advantages and disadvantages of these methods and also about the process of triangulation. Towards the end of this chapter, we discussed about what is sampling, field work in sociology and contribution of some of the noted Indian sociologists. This is all about doing research in sociology briefly. Enjoy reading this chapter. Thank you.